With us today, Joe Garcia, a former head of the powerful Cuban American National Foundation. He's a newly declared congressional candidate for the Democrats. And Ramon Sanchez, a Cuban exile who despises the government in Havana that says the embargo does not work. It feels like there's a change going on in the Cuban uh, American community. Do you, can you tell me what it, what it feels like to you? I think in Miami, you, you've got a, a generation, for the first time uh, ever, there are more Cubans that came after 1980 than before. They tend to be younger, they tend to be out more, and so their debate and their discussion is a very different perspective from what, say, my parents or mine, who, who was born in the United States. Do you see it that way? I think uh, and on top of that, we can add that uh, people are, are also uh, looking back and saying what has worked and what, what has not worked. And it is time for change. It the embargo is clearly a broken policy. It's been in place for longer than any other trade embargo on the planet. And it's achieved nothing but misery, essentially, right? Uh, the, the embargo has afforded Fidel Castro the excuse that everything that fails in Cuba is somebody else's fault. So it has, in a way, helped Fidel Castro maintain himself in the approach that he best likes, which is a conflict between the United States and Cuba. But this, this is ironic to me, because you guys are pillars of the Cuban-American community here. It is the disproportionate influence of your community which has kept this embargo in place in the yeah, face but, of all reason. But it's reason. not a bad thing. The, the, the truth is, in a democracy, in a, in a democracy where people have a view, and that view is effectuated by votes. You know, Cubans should have more to say about Cuba. But they have more power than their numbers would, would suggest in this no, country. No, they have just the right power because they <laughs> vote. They vote well, hard, and it's important. I don't think it has been only the exile community's power that has kept the embargo in force. Remember, historically, the embargo was not put into effect to help the freedom of Cuba. It was put into effect when the properties of the United States were confiscated in Cuba by the Cuban regime. You know, but people outside of, of North America, many of them see the embargo as simple collective punishment. Israel closes off Gaza because they don't like the government there. They deprive the people there of, of electricity, of fuel, of, of food and medicine. That's exactly how many people around the world see the embargo in Cuba. But, how is is it not very, just collective it's punishment? Very it's very different because in the end, the truth is you can buy all the food, medicine, anything you want anywhere in the world. And, you know, Fidel Castro has a great speech where he says, ni una aspirina. You know, nobody buys aspirin from the United States in the first place. So Twenty-seven percent of, of, of voters, uh, in Hispanic voters in Miami, are Democrats. There's some shift going on here. Can you well, characterize? Let me, let me give you an example. And, and it's twenty-seven percent are Cuban American. And uh, when you add to that that in the last ten years, Republican Cuban Americans used to be forty-nine percent. In the last ten years, they've gone down to forty-one percent which is over a, 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 almost a twenty-point loss. So it's clear to you both that this that, that, that the legendary power of the Cuban exile community is starting to shift towards the Democrats. And, but that's good. I think Ramon would well, agree well, with it. One well, of the, one it of the strikes me that the Democrats have the best chance of winning the White House in eight years and that this is just opportunism. And, and the distinction by who? By the Cubans? Or sure. By, no, I, I, Go where the power is. Now you're all Democrats. No, Changes in the air. No, no. What, it, what it's called is called democracy. And democracy, you get to choose a future. Look, if a Republican doesn't get over 65 percent of the Cuban vote, he can't win statewide. That's how important Cubans are to the base of the Republican Party. I read a quote from a former member of the Cuban American National Foundation that said that Miami has its own foreign minister. Miami has its own foreign policy. Is that is that part of a democracy for a community well, to I, determine you, you, that you much of a foreign you don't, policy? You don't think that uh, the Jewish community has its own views? I on do, Israel? and I, I'm not you sure that's very good for a democracy. You don't think, you don't think I mean, the reason I bring that up is because I think internationally, there it, it's perceived that there's a double standard around terrorism in in this community and, and in this country for instance you have uh, characters like Orlando Bosch like uh, Luis Posada Carriles who are who have been accused of, of terrorist crimes what I'm saying is these guys are heroes in this community no, we, and they I are, disagree and they, strongly and with those accused people. of terrorism but I, we disagree strongly with those people and there are a huge amount of there is a huge amount of people in this community that disagree with them you know, they do not represent the vast majority of, of the exile community. How do you see the situation in 10 years from now? Well, I see, I think, that the nonviolence movement, nonviolent movement inside of Cuba is going to become a factor that eventually will force the government to undergo reforms and it, it will end up with a democratic uh, system. I think Cuba is ready to move on. They've paid a horrible price. And I think the, the people in South Florida and the rest of Cubans around the world want to help them move forward. Thanks, guys. Pleasure.